This is one of my favourite videos on the internet. It's of a giant panda, and since 1961, when the World Wildlife Foundation was established, billions of dollars have been spent to keep these great big balls of fuzz from extinction. And that's a real problem. In the last century alone, more than 900 species have become extinct, and more than 16,000 are currently at risk of also heading the same way. So, out of those thousands of species, how do we pick which animals to allocate resources and time towards? Well, we could work towards saving the species that are closest to extinction, like the Javan rhino, for example, of which there are only 60 left in the wild. Another way would be to save species that are most influential to their ecosystem, like mangroves, for example, which provide a habitat for thousands of different species. But unfortunately, we currently implement none of these approaches. Looking back at the giant panda, they're not nearly as endangered as the Javan rhino, with their population being almost 25 times as large. Nor do they play as critical a role in their ecosystem as the mangrove. And yet we continue to spend upwards of half a billion dollars on them every single year. So why do we continue to keep these animals on conservation or life support? Well, it's quite simple, really. They're cute. Hello? Hello. Hello, Tom. Hi, Joanna. How are you? This is Joanna. My name is Joanna Rochtpin. I'm an environmental anthropologist, and I'm currently a postdoctoral researcher at the Center for International Studies at the Lisbon University Institute in Portugal. Jonah has, for years, been studying the link between human aesthetic appreciation, i.e. how cute an animal is, and conservation efforts. Even in conservation policy making, in laws, regulations, amount of funding that is dedicated to species, uh, species that, that in general can be considered attractive or cute are um, disproportionately uh, invested in. We are more attracted to species, as I mentioned before, that, that look like humans, but another huge characteristic is um, neo, uh, spe species with youthful features or species who are, that are neotenic. Um, so usually species with big heads, round, big eyes, that look like human babies. Yeah. I mean, that's the panda for you, yeah. right? And that's why this little guy has literally become the face of wildlife conservation the world over. There are definitely aspects to these feelings towards species that are hardwired in us as a result of evolution. So while these fuzzy-faced creatures hog the spotlight, it's creatures with less appealing faces or no faces at all that suffer. You might also be ignoring and discriminating against um, species that are ugly but have very ecological functions. And this isn't just a Western phenomenon. Jonah also studied how the tribal Maasai people of continental Africa viewed animals. The main focus of my research in general was to find out how their relationship with wildlife was changing. Because Maasai have been represented as being environmentally destructive on one, on one side and as living in harmony with those wildlife on the other side. But one thing that was never mentioned was whether um, they found aesthetic value, if they found those animals beautiful or ugly. And although their conceptions of beauty differ, it still played a huge role in how they conserve their animal populations. So should we really let conservation efforts be dictated by whether an animal has the potential to go viral on YouTube? Or should we rather take a more rational approach towards wildlife conservation? The trade-off is this. A more rational approach towards wildlife conservation would result in a healthier ecosystem. But it would also mean living in a world without videos like this. So we have to ask ourselves, is this something we're willing to do? First of all, a huge thank you to Joanna for helping me make this video a reality. You can check out her full study in the link in the description below. I spoke to Joanna for almost 30 minutes and we discussed so many fascinating and important things. That's why next week I'll be bringing you my extended interview with Joanna. You won't want to miss it. 
That's next week on The Science of Everything. <laughs>